Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at three stocks to consider buying as the market falls and rates rise again on inflation and economic slowdown fears. The stocks we're going to look at today are Merck, First Ban Corp, and Next Era Energy. But before we get into everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review or every listen to your podcast. And make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look at some of our services, portfolios, and more. So I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, right before the closing bell. And at, uh, stocks really look like they're headed for a brutal day again on Thursday uh, with all the major indexes down around 2% at one point, but the markets recouped some of those losses and the Dow has turned green at the end of the day. We saw the S&P 500 go a little green and the NASDAQ was only down about half a percentage the last time I looked, but still we have the 10-year climbing back up again and oil falling. So this is all of these just economic and uh, slowdown fears and inflation worries, just all of this chaos recently that's uh, had the market headed for its fifth straight drop after Powell's speech last Friday. So really, let's just start there. Uh, we won't focus too much on Thursday because by the time you're listening to this, it will probably be a little bit irrelevant on exactly how we close on Thursday. Uh, so the Fed and Jay Powell are on that mission to tackle 40-year high inflation with higher interest rates and other monetary tightening efforts. And unfortunately, prices have offered few signs of letting up. This is why Powell and the Fed remained super hawkish last Friday. So Powell stressed again the Fed's willingness to cause economic pain in order to bring down prices to more reasonable levels. That continued hawkish tone mixed with tight labor market and millions of job openings has Wall Street really quickly reversing its peak inflation bet, sending stocks lower. So the recent wave of selling that happened after the Friday last Friday speech has wiped away all of August's gains which the market was trending downward already heading into Friday's speech. So, yeah, really it's a lot of economic sectors underperforming, continued growth selling now after we had had that two-month jump off those mid-June lows. We're now, have, as I said, wiped off a month worth of gains. The 10-year Treasury is back up to about 3.27%, well above the 2.57% it was at on August 1st. And it now looks like it could be ready to start approaching those mid-June peaks of 3.5%, which actually new decade-long highs, which right when it hit those peaks was right when the market was bottoming. So uh, the higher the interest rates, the lower the stocks. So that's kind of they go in uh, reverse of each other, inverse of each other. So with all of this, let's just quickly kind of look at inflation and why maybe it's going to be here to stay a little bit longer than anyone would hope. So obviously, it's a pretty complex phenomenon with a long history in the U.S. and obviously other places around the world, much worse in many other countries with less stable currency. So the 40 year inflation we're facing in the country today is fueled by really tons of factors. The list of culprits includes the government's initial pandemic response of easy money, stimulus checks, other huge government spending efforts on top of that. Ongoing supply chain and shipping bottlenecks continue to rattle companies and shoppers. Labor shortages are also driving up wages, adding to costs, setting prices higher. Consumers are also continuing to spend even in the face of these higher prices, especially higher income. Consumers are just not even noticing these prices and just spending, especially after years, a few years of pandemic restrictions. And then obviously the Russian invasion of Ukraine is causing lots of negative impacts in terms of the supply of oil, natural gas, wheat, other commodities. And then we also have 50-year low unemployment, an aging population. All of these factors are just contributing to a, uh, a, a big spike in inflation. So that might make the Fed's job really hard and they could have to keep raising interest rates. And we're going to be in for some definite unknowns in the coming months Uh until we see some sign of possibly the CPI coming down in the next few months, and the Fed's going to need to see that come down pretty pretty far off these highs, and for a couple reports in a row to be convinced at all that inflation is coming uh, under control and off its peak. So, with the general rule of thumb, would be to look for sectors that consumers can't really live without. So these companies should also be able to pass on some of their higher costs to customers without driving away demand. Uh, and obviously, you also want to look for companies that are able to pay dividends 
help gain some extra income. So with this in mind, uh, you could look for companies in the energy space, utilities, retail, healthcare, consumer staples, finance. These are all really indispensable parts of the economy. And in fact, at this point in the year, energy and utilities are the only two S&P 500 sectors in the green in 2022 with consumer staples nearly flat and everything else reporting declines. So with this in mind, we should also look for stocks that are uh, been able to lift their outlooks recently uh, amid all of the inflation. So with this, we're going to take a look at the three stocks I mentioned up top. And the first one of those is Merck. So Merck & Co. trades under MRK. That's the ticker. It's a diversified pharmaceutical company with offerings in areas such as oncology, vaccines, infectious diseases, diabetes, and beyond. One of its star oncology drugs is cancer-fighting drug Keytruda, and it's prescribed to treat melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, and more. Meanwhile, its HPV vaccination standout, which is Gardasil and Gardasil 9, are thriving at the moment. And Merck's COVID-19 antiviral pill is also boosting sales as it competes against similar offerings from Pfizer. So that's a drug that's designed to help uh, patients not have to go into the hospital if they're suffering from COVID symptoms. Overall, the pharmaceutical firm has bolstered its portfolio in the last year with a big purchase of a Celeron Pharma for about $11.5 billion to bring on board an experimental drug for pulmonary arterial hypertension and more. Uh, so plus, Merck appears to be in hot pursuit of other deals with a reportedly in advance talks to buy a cancer-focused biotech company at the moment, but there's no confirmation of that just yet, so there's no need to get into that. But in general, the company's looking to expand, as lots of large-cap pharmaceutical companies are as well. So Merck's earnings and sales are projected to climb by double digits in 2022 to the tune of 17% sales growth and 22% adjusted earnings growth. And its EPS estimates have uh, held up really well amid the larger downturn in revisions at the S&P 500 level. On top of that, Merck shares have managed to climb by double digits in 2022, even as the market has tumbled. Uh, so it's up 14% so far this year versus industry's 5% drop. And overall, the stock's up about 100% in the last decade as well. Uh, although it's now trading somewhat near fresh highs. Uh, its valuation is also still pretty enticing. Merck's trading at about 30% beneath its own decade-long highs and 10% 10 10 below its median and not too far off its actual 10-year lows. So it's trading at 12.5 times forward earnings at the moment, which also marks a 15% discount to its industry. Merck's 2022 strength and its solid longer-term performance uh, help make its roughly 3.3% dividend yield look even better which also happens to top its industry's 2.6% average and come right in line at the moment with the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Uh, Merck also lands a Zaxxon exclusively hold at the moment, so certainly worth considering as part of a inflation play with a, able to pay a dividend and as part of a longer-term uh, diversified portfolio as well as a big, large-cap pharmaceutical company. The next stock we're going to look at is First Ban Corp. So that trades under the ticker FBN. Uh, it's a low price stock trading for under $15 a share that's managed to climb also in 2022. It's a financial services provider that also pays an industry beating dividend. So that's kind of the gist there. So let's dive a little bit further into it. So the company is an established financial services player with the roots dating back uh, well over 50 years. The company went public back in the early 1990s with FBP shares having outperformed the Zacks finance sector over the last 10 years, with it up about 250%. So overall, uh, First Band Corp. operates in Puerto Rico, the U.S., and British Virgin Islands, as well as Florida. And the company's diverse portfolio includes banks, insurance firms, loan companies, and more. And the company is part of an industry, which is our Southeast Banks industry, which is in the top 14% of over 250 Zacks industries at the moment as this group continues to benefit from higher interest rates. So with this in mind, the stock's up about 4% in 2022, even as the finance sector has dropped about 14%, and the benchmark has dropped about 17%, with it up about 12% in the past 12 months alone. And then despite this climb, it's certainly what many people would consider quote-unquote cheap, 
with the stock trading for under $15 per share at the moment. So along with that, the company posted solid Q2 results in late July, and it also raised its outlook as it benefits, as I said, from that rising interest rate environment, which could get even better for regional banks in uh, as the Fed ramps up its inflation fight. So it's FY 2022 and 2023 consensus earning estimates have climbed by around 6% since then to help it capture Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment. And then in terms of growth, uh, Zach's estimates are calling for it to post 7% revenue growth this year and then another 9% in 2023 with 14% adjusted earnings growth this year and then another nearly 10% next year. So some solid top and bottom line growth. And then along with its low stock price, it's trading at a 25% discount to its own 10-year median at just 8.5 times forward 12-month earnings. This is a 60% discount to its own decade-long highs and right near its lows. Uh, it's also offering 10% value compared to its highly ranked industry and about 40% compared to the broader finance sector, even though it's consistently outperformed both of those areas. Uh, so alongside its value and low share price, the company's current average price target offers about 15% upside to Thursday's levels and four out of the five brokerage recommendations that Zach's has are strong buys with the other coming in at a buy. On top of that, the company provides investors with really solid income with the dividend yielding about 3.3% at the moment to beat its industry's 2.2%, the S&P 500's 1.5% average, and uh, as we mentioned before with Merck roughly now matching the 10-year U.S. Treasury. And now we're going to close out with a big energy utility player. So Nextera Energy, which trades in the ticker NEE, -E -E. Nextera is kind of the best of both worlds in this sense. It's a boring utility operator fused with a renewable energy giant. So the company owns one of the biggest electric utilities in the country called Florida Power and Light Company. The massive vertically integrated rate regulated electric utility serves about 6 million customer accounts. And its portfolio also includes Nextera Energy Resources uh, and other renewable entities that help make it one of the largest producers of wind and solar in the US and globally as well. It's also a leader in battery storage, and it generates uh, electricity from nuclear power plants as well. So this diverse portfolio helps it expose to a lot of growth areas. Nuclear is certainly one of those. It's still uh, a little divisive in some areas, but certainly it accounts for 20% of U.S. electricity generation at the moment. And it's gaining steam in places like China, France, and elsewhere, especially amid the current uh, Russian invasion where people are starting to get a little worried about having to uh, save up for energy uses in places like Europe, uh, where they're now, they're now trying to ration energy in the anticipation of the winter with Russian natural gas not coming to the country. So this might have people rethinking nuclear more than ever. And then obviously, wind and solar are also projected to expand their share of electricity generation in the U.S. and around the globe uh, for years to come as well. With this in mind, the stock has been a really impressive growth stock for years and years. Uh, it's up about 1,100% in the last 20 years with a huge run over the last decade. And the company has soared about 420% in the last decade to be specific versus the S&P 500's 200% climb and its sector's 40% run. So that just shows how impressive uh, growth knee has put up. Uh, Nexter also provided upbeat guidance in the face of economic headwinds and inflation, like all of these companies have, with its adjusted earnings projected to grow by 13% this year and another 8% in 2023. And meanwhile, its revenue is projected to climb 20% this year and then a 28% next year to about $26 billion. And then in terms of providing value to shareholders, uh, the company lifted its 2022 dividend by 10%, and it plans to keep raising its payout by 10% a year through at least 2024, with its yield currently sitting at around 2% to top the S&P 500's average, uh, and which is also impressive as well since the stock is up so big. And its outperformance overall highlights the stability of its utilities business combined with the, the green growth prospects of its business. And just to reiterate its size and strength, 
Next area is by far the biggest holding in the utility sector, Spider ETF, which is that XLU. So it's a really, really big stock, uh, which should help provide some stability and income to your portfolio during this inflation period and then also longer term as well. And its positive EPS revisions helping land a Zach's rank number two buy at the moment. So all three of these stocks are certainly worth considering as Wall Street recalibrates its bets on peak inflation and just an economic slowdown. And people are pretty, pretty nervous about things that are happening at the moment. So these three stocks could help calm those nerves in your portfolio. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.